Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine and today we're going to be talking about conservation or the protection of our natural resources. Today's video is going to focus on energy conservation, where our energy comes from, how we use this energy, and how you can conserve energy. Make sure to check out my video on water conservation as well. So what exactly is conservation? Conservation is the protection of our natural resources so that humans can continue to use it sustainably. For something to be sustainable, it means it has the ability to be used at a constant or the same rate for a long time. Along with the word conservation, you may also hear the word preservation. So what's the difference? One example of preservation you may see is in our national parks. National parks are created by the government in order to prevent humans from changing the environment too much. That's why you can only camp in a national park. On the other hand, national forests illustrate a different story. A wider variety of activities can be done at a national forest, including logging, hunting, raising animals, and camping. So what is the importance of conserving our resources? It's important to conserve so we can protect our natural resources. Natural resources are the things found in nature that people can use to stay alive. This includes our soil, air, water, plants and animals, and fossil fuels. One reason we need to do this is because the human population has seen a massive increase. Since 1960, the world population has grown by roughly 1 billion people every 13 years. This leads to pressure and unsustainable practices of using our resources. The main topic of today's video is to cover energy conservation. We use a lot of energy in our daily lives, whether it's to heat our homes, run electronic appliances, manufacture or make products, and so much more. Fossil fuels are an important natural resource, created from the fossilized remains of organisms who died millions of years ago Today, these are known as coal, oil, and gas. Burning these fossil fuels helps release energy that we use in our households. In 2019 alone, about 63% of the electricity generated was from fossil fuels. You might be thinking, why should we conserve energy? It doesn't really hurt our environment, does it? That's wrong. The majority of our electricity is generated from burning fossil fuels. All of our fossil fuels are buried deep in the Earth's crust. All fossil fuels require drilling and the building of wells to bring these fuels up to the surface in order to extract them. Finding and extracting fossil fuels hurts our environment as well. Huge areas of lands, once home to many plants and animals, from forests to mountains, have been cleared and blasted away to expose underground coal and oil. A lot of the land is also used for the transportation and processing of fossil fuels, thereby taking more land away from animals and plants. This destroys an animal's habitat, land crucial for breeding and migration. Crude oil, otherwise known as petroleum, is found deep underground. In order to access this oil, we need to drill deep into the earth. This drilling can occur both on land or at sea. A controversial practice for extracting oil has gained popularity over the last decade. It is a process called fracking, or hydraulic fracturing. This involves blasting huge quantities of water at extremely high pressures to fracture the rocks and allow oil to escape. However, fracking can involve a whole host of environmental problems, including water and air pollution. The harmful effects of extracting oil and other fossil fuels can be seen very clearly during Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. 514 individual oil spills were recorded, causing 11 million gallons of oil to be spilled into our environment. Coal mining itself can also have a negative effect on our environment. From clearing large swaths of land to make way for mining operations, these operations can also allow acid to run off into water, killing wildlife and contaminating our drinking supply. All extraction of fossil fuels create wastewater, which is water contaminated with heavy metals, radioactive material, and pollutants. 
Burning fossil fuels for energy also can pollute our air. Burning coal leads to an increase in particles in our air, as well as increased acid rain. Meanwhile, burning other fossil fuels can increase the amount of harmful chemicals in the air, even ones that can contribute to illness. Fossil fuels also hurt people before they are burned. About 12.6 million Americans are exposed every day to air pollution caused by active oil and gas wells. The processing and refining of oil and petroleum products also contributes to increased air pollution. Beyond toxic chemicals, burning fossil fuels also releases a lot of carbon dioxide, or CO2, into the atmosphere. While humans and animals breathe out small amounts of carbon dioxide, the amount of carbon dioxide emitted by fossil fuels is so great that it's trapping heat in Earth's atmosphere, contributing to something we call global warming. The average global temperature of the Earth has risen so much and so quickly over the last 50 years that it has become a serious issue. Though a change in temperature of a few degrees may not seem like a lot, it is actually very detrimental to the Earth. It has led to melting glaciers, contributing to a rising sea level, which has led to severe flooding. Scientists also agree that global warming has led to more powerful storms and severe droughts. So how can we reduce the impact of fossil fuels on our environment? Well, we can do that by conserving energy. But how exactly do we do that? The first tip is to use energy efficient products. Energy efficiency means using less energy to do the exact same task. When shopping for new appliances, look for the Energy Star label. This means that it exceeds the federal minimum standards for energy efficiency. It'll work great for conserving energy in the long run. Investing in a computer with the Energy Star label allows you to use 30 to 65% less energy during your use of a computer. Advances in human technology has also contributed to more energy efficient light products. LEDs, or light emitting diodes, use about 20 to 25% of the energy that a traditional light bulb does. LEDs will even last 8 to 25 times longer than a traditional light bulb, allowing you to save money in the long run. Now, if you're not shopping for new products, how can you reduce electricity usage right now? One way to reduce your electricity usage is to use cool water whenever possible, instead of warm water. For instance, if you're doing your laundry, using cool water reduces the need for energy to heat the water. You can even conserve water while doing your laundry, by washing and drying full loads only. Another way you can reduce energy is by air drying your clothes instead of using a dryer. This works especially in good weather, though it may depend on your climate. Another way to reduce your electricity usage is by turning off the screen of your computer if you're not using it for 20 minutes or more. This goes for virtually any electronic, including your TV. While it may seem nice to have Netflix running in the background, it can also use a lot of energy. Make sure that whenever possible, use the low power setting on your computer. This will reduce the energy used even when you're not using it. A lot of cords plugged into your power outlet still use electricity even if your device or laptop is on full charge. So make sure you unplug your battery chargers whenever you're not using it or if your device is fully charged. This should go without saying, but make sure that whenever you leave a room or you're not using the lights in one room, just turn them off. Lighting accounts for about 5% of your home's electricity bill, so this can also save you a ton of money. Keeping in mind that cooler water, or less water in general, saves you energy, make sure that whenever you're brushing your teeth or not using the tap, that you just turn it off. Also, make sure you look out for leaks. Leaks can also cause a lot of water to be wasted, and with that, a lot of energy being used. The same goes for showers and baths. Showers use less water than baths, so make sure that you're taking a shower instead of a bath and make sure your showers are short in time. We don't want to waste water or waste energy. 
Now, I want to talk about how you can indirectly impact energy use around the world. And this is by thinking twice about your clothing. Polyester is probably the most commonly used fabric in the clothing you're wearing today. The problem is, it's made from fossil fuels. Washing one load of polyester clothing can drop as many as 700,000 microplastic fibers into our environment. Microplastics are plastic debris that are less than 5 millimeters in length and extremely harmful to our environment. Animals could eat it and it could also continue polluting our oceans. Even though cotton is natural, the amount of cotton it takes to make one t-shirt and one pair of jeans takes about 10,000 to 20,000 liters of water to manufacture. Today, the fashion industry is extremely unsustainable with a focus on fast fashion or treating clothing items like they're disposable in favor of new trends in styles. Since more people want to buy clothes, this has led the fashion industry to produce more carbon emissions than both planes and boats combined. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy clothes anymore, but you have a choice in what brands you choose to wear. Choose brands that recycle materials, and if you outgrow your old clothes, you can always recycle, resell, and donate old clothes instead of throwing them away. And lastly, I know many of you probably aren't driving cars, but for future reference, make sure that the vehicle you buy in the future is an electric vehicle. Additionally, try walking or biking places that are close by. Remember, you guys are the future of this country and this world. Your actions in reducing energy usage can help contribute to less pollution and less waste, leading to a brighter future for our lovely planet. Thank you guys for watching today's video and I hope you learned something. See you guys next week!